Hi guys. I have been busy washing fleeces and what I have here is a sheep named Gary. Gary is, um, hold on, let me grab my uh, crib sheet, see, 2020 Gary. He is a Romney Gotland cross and he was a total of three pounds, 12 ounces raw. I have since washed him. I did not wait to see how much I lost. So what I'm going to do is I've uh, roughly separated it in the bag from light gray to medium gray to darkest gray. So you can see how much variation there is in that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the light I'm going to comb up a whole bunch of roving in the light, then I will do some medium, then I will do some dark. My ultimate plan is to spin a, a chain ply yarn and then dye it. And to put all three tones in each skein and dye it as one batch. So then you get like from light to dark to light to dark and whatever color we I decide to go with. This is my ambition. How far I'll get, I don't know. But for now, I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with the whitest grays as opposed to the darkest grays, as you can see. And I'll start combing. So I'll probably film some of this. I'm just going to sit and watch TV. I've got my hackle set up, so I'm just going to use comb on my hackle and then load it all on the end diz off of that when I feel I have enough. So let me just resort my fleece chunks back into their respective piles and let's get combing. I'll just put you on time lapse because you don't need to listen to me combing. There's nothing exciting to hear. All right, I'll reposition you and let's get to work. So I didn't realize until I started combing it that how crazy this staple length is. So I thought for fun, we would have a look. So we're looking at the longest fibers being about nine inches. You see that? That's crazy. I had no idea it was so long. Now this is a very actually clean fleece. A lot of what's coming out is just some very fine, I don't know if you can see that on there, do I have a piece of paper? You can see it's just some very fine debris and some veggie matter dust. This was um, a fleece from uh, Val's farm and Val's sheep were always like for a, a farm animal her fleeces have always been amazingly clean and definitely worth every penny you paid for them so this is our first batch of the lighter fibers this is my seconds I can comb this again this was just a quick first pass so what I'm gonna do is haul out my cool new Magicraft Diz I love this brass Diz honestly it's been one of the most amazing things I've ever purchased and I've only had it for a short period of time but I just love it now I don't think I want to go with the biggest I want to spin this fairly thin but I don't want to go with the smallest so I'm going to go with the medium sized hole I know that was a lot of talking just to go with let's just go average huh? but you can see because Gary had very brown tips that were a lot darker than the under fleece that we're getting this streaky browny gray look to it as well which i think is so pretty back off my dis a little bit 
Oh, this is such a long staple. I'm just not used to dizzing off with the staple this long. I need to pull it a lot farther before I slide up my diz. Wow. <laughs> Way a lot farther before I slide up my diz. Wow. And this was like, I did two combs worth. And this is what I'm getting out of it. I think Gary's going to be a lovely fleece to work with. Now the hand of the fleece is probably a medium. I would say, I don't think I would wear it next to the skin. I think it's a little scratchier than that, but it is lovely nonetheless. that up into a little nest and there is our first light colored nest now I'm gonna make a medium and a dark just so I can compare them all and see how they look in roving flower I'm sure there's enough of the variance on the underwool to um, make a color difference because you see if you look at what looks like a very white section of the fleece if you pull off the lock, you can actually see, there's some serious second cuts in here. You can see that the base is very white. The middle is sometimes into a darker charcoal gray and the tips are bleached brown. So as you're making your roving, you're actually getting a blend of those colors. So it's not going to stay this light. It will become more like this but this is streaky like you can see there's darker and lighter bits but I think overall the tone is going to be much lighter so I'm going to do up some medium and some dark and then we can compare the three and see how they look so I'll be back later all right so here's our first three balls of roving so we have our light medium and darker tone the dark is um lightening up a lot because if you look at the darker fleece a lot of the dark is very 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 short so it's actually getting combed right out so our third tone is not as dark as i would hope had hoped it would be but it is still a gradient colorway so we got light medium dark and it's still going to show up in the dye as different tones so out of i did about two combfuls of each color this was out of my first combing. I wasn't being really particular. I was just giving it a quick comb to straighten it up, get any nuts and oils out and any debris. And as you can see, the actual amount of debris in here is very little. One thing about Val, she kept her sheep very, very clean. For uncoated sheep, her sheep are, were amazing. She no longer has the firm and it makes me so sad. But um, I will probably card the rest of this. So I'll comb out the best, then I'll card up the rest and use it for other projects. But for this yarn, I want to make some roving. So this is where I'm at with step one. I will keep poking away at it and then we will, when I have enough, we'll spin up some yarn for dyeing. So here we have some combed fleece. So we're going from light to medium to dark. It's a very um, subtle transition, but I'm going to work with it and I'm going to spin it up on my new eel wheel. So I'm literally like curled up on my couch watching YouTube. I have my foot pedal right here and this is how I have been spinning with my electric wheel. Move it forward a bit so you can see better. So when I'm ready to spin, I just keep this kind of under my elbow, click it on. Now, I think it's adding way too much twist, so I'm gonna slow that down a bit and I'm gonna increase my uptake a bit. 
Yeah, that's much better. This is a very, very long staple length fiber, so I think I can get a very fine yarn out of it. Now I find this super comfortable way to spin. I can sit here and watch TV. There's my stop right there if I need it. Let me check. See, needs just a bit more twist. Now, I still haven't gotten a battery for my wheel yet, but that's on my list of things to get. So then I can take it with me everywhere. Which, for someone with an anxiety disorder, having the ability to spin anywhere is kind of like a dream come true. <laughs> it sounds marvelous to me. Um, spindles, yes, I realize, will spin anywhere. And I have used spindles, but I find them not as soothing like for family function or whatever they require too much focus still still getting hung up somewhere hold on aha there we go now i do find these little wire hooks on this wheel are a bit of a pain um, but I see there are 3D printed inserts you can get for them to make them a little less scatty into the wool. So I'm going to get some of those and then I think that'll make everything just perfect. But for the moment, I am learning how to use the wheel and I'm very, very happy with it. So I'm going to spin up this gradient yarn and I'm going to, I believe, chain ply it to keep those, uh, subtle variations in tone in place. I just have to decide if I want to do all my light, then all my medium, then all my dark, which I'm leaning towards doing that. And then it'll be like one long skein of light to dark as opposed to having alternating stripes. So I'm going to make this my goal today is to get this yarn done up. I've probably got a little over 50 grams combed up so it's not going to be a huge skein but if it works out well I have the rest of the fleece I can work with so I will check back in when I have some yarn to show you see you later all right so it's time to dye some yarn in my bucket here I have some brown rambouille locks it's been washed but that's it I'm soaking that I'm gonna do some dyeing with that Here's our gradient gray, and then over here I have Wensleydale locks. So I'm going to get them all prepped in the pans, and we'll come back to add the dye. Now, I have the locks all laid out with the tips one way and the butts the other, so it should give it a gradient across the lock as well. So I'm kind of excited for this, but I don't know if I want to go yellow, orange, red, or red, orange, yellow. I think we're going to go yellow, orange, red. So we'll use up the last of this yellow. Now because we use different intensities of gray, the yellow is going to show up differently across all the grays, which could be really cool or really crappy, I don't know. Now we're going to put some orange on. As usual, I'm just winging it. Okay, my oven's up to temperature. And now we will add the red. have like a splash of the vermilion left so I'm just going to dump that onto the locks and only have a splash of the orange left so we'll add that 
there we go. All right, so that's ready to get covered up and to go into the oven for 20 minutes to bake. Now with this one, this is just wash fiber, just locks. And I wanted to just have some fun with it. So I'm just gonna pour in some River Blue. Oops, I think I just bumped you. I did. So pour in some River Blue. Yeah. Some Ruby Red. And I'm going to push that down into that. So hopefully what we'll end up getting is some patches of red, some patches of blue, some patches of purple, where the colors are mixing. Because it's just in locks, I'm not worried about getting it in any particular place because I can just adjust how I want. Well, I put a lot of dye in there. <laughs> Oopsie. And then I just wanted to add, whoops, apparently that one doesn't seal all the way. And then just put a diagonal of midnight black right across the middle. And this is why I keep black towels in my kitchen. All right, I'm going to wrap these in tin foil, pop them into the oven for 20 minutes. And we will see what we have when we're done. All right, so I have it dyed up and out drying in the sun. I thought this would be a good place to show. You can see how the lighter gray goes into the darker gray and how you get that beautiful gradient of color. There's the yellow. Here's the orange. And into the red. And it just came out really beautiful. A nice warm day so it shouldn't take long to dry and I can shoot the end of this video then. Be back. Here's the locks I dyed with the gray. They have this beautiful gradient from yellow to red at the tips. I'll probably spin that into a nice tail spun. I think it would turn out very very gorgeous like a flame scarf would be cool. So here is the Rambouillet fleece. It's a brown one that I dyed up. And you can see the multitude of colors that actually show. We get some nice reds and some blues and some pretty purples. And a lot of it is tipped in the black that I added. And then we have a patch of straight black here. This is going to be fun to work with. Now I did have problems exhausting the dye bath, so I added some extra, and that's this here. So it's got a more pinky purple tone to it. It's much lighter, but you can see that it is a brown fleece that over dyed, mostly in the tips, to have this pinky purple haze to it. Oh, this fleece is so soft. I can't wait to start working with this. Now, this is going to be combed. Everybody's going to say, oh, it's too short. No, it's not. We're going to comb it. And I'll show you the magic of this fleece. But for now, I'm going to let it dry in the sunshine. And we'll come back to it later. Well, here it is weeks later. And I was just setting up the video and realized I hadn't finished filming it. So what I was working on was just crocheting with that gradient and just trying to put it so you could see how the center is the light working into the medium and then into the dark. So the color changes are very subtle, but they are there. And I think it's very pretty. Now, I am probably going to frog this because it was just kind of a sample thing. I was just playing around. So I will probably frog this and use the yarn in a different project. But I just wanted to share the end results with you. And uh, 
show you that uh yeah i did actually finish the yarn i just didn't finish the video <laughs> so if you like this do this stuff down below because i do stuff like this all the time thanks for joining me guys